It's time for day two of my 2,000 kilometer motorcycle road trip from Toronto to Quebec City. Today, I woke up in Brockville, Ontario, about 350 kilometers away from home, and I need to decide, do I wanna stay here in Brockville and be a tourist, or do I wanna ride about 215 kilometers, about two hours of riding on the highway in the rain to get to Montreal? <sighs> yep, roads are wet. Sky is wet, rain jacket is wet. Everything is wet. Now Michael and Melissa have offered to let me sort of camp out at their place for the day, but I know when I'm hosting people, my favorite guests are the ones who go away, so I'm gonna get out of their face. So I didn't wanna impose too, too much. I just tried to go to bed early, stay out of their way, not be a pain in the butt, basically. And yeah, now I'm just stuck figuring out, do I wanna rough it highways two hours in the rain, or do I wanna just stick around and be a bum tourist in Brockville? First breakfast, then we decide later. <laughs> and away we go. Thanks guys. Truthfully, at this point, I have no idea where I'm going and it's raining too hard for me to want to test just how really waterproof my cell phone is. But I figure I kind of know where the main street is. I'll go towards there and I'll find something. Oh, Tim straight ahead, beauty. Get some breakfast. Gonna, gonna park right under this tree, hopefully it protects me a tiny bit. So at this point, I'm like being one of those old men in the coffee shop, you know, I bought a donut and I spend 15 minutes eating my donut. I get up, get a bottle of water, I spend 15 minutes drinking my bottle of water. I'm monitoring the radars on my phone, I'm looking at the sky, I'm just waiting for something to change, some kind of sign to point me one way or the other. And while I'm killing the time, I'm looking for, you know, Googling things to do in Brockville and I come across this railway tunnel, which, all right, sure, sounds okay, sounds pretty cool. I had no idea I was actually going to enjoy it so much. I think you guys are going to enjoy it a lot too. Let me show you. So this is the first railway tunnel ever built in Canada. Construction began in 1854 and we didn't have underground boring machines or even dynamite back then. And so instead construction crews relied on hard work and low tech means of just getting the job done. On one side of the tunnel, the workers hand dug through the earth. You can see cut out holes in the walls on both sides of the tunnel. That held scaffolding and an arched wood form in place and the masons would rely on this to help support the ceiling while they worked. Further down, they were faced with hard rock which needed to be blasted through. Back in the 1850s, gunpowder was the explosive of choice. We didn't have dynamite. And along the walls, you can see where the workers hand chiseled into the rock to pour down the gunpowder for their blasts. The tunnel itself was built using the cut and cover method, meaning they didn't actually dig a tunnel into the earth. They dug out a trench into the earth, they built their tunnel, and then they covered on top of that. This huge extraction shaft goes up about 50 to 60 feet over my head. It was used as an access portal. They, they used it for everything from bringing in workers, bringing in materials, tools, to just taking out water, blasted rock, you name it. And the first train finally ran through this tunnel around 1860. As you can see, there is water galore in this tunnel and that is by design. Essentially, the water coming through the stones stops hydrostatic pressure from building up in the tunnel, which could make the walls inside collapse. Learn something new every day. I've always thought leaking was a bad thing, apparently not. What's really cool is that this continuous flow of water has created some really cool mineral deposits over the walls and floor of the tunnel, and it's actually kind of beautiful in here. The different colors that you'll see of stuff actually represents a different kind of mineral that you're looking at. So for example, calcite is white, dolomite is yellowish, Iron can be orange and red, and anything you see that's blue or has a green tint to it probably comes from nickel and copper. It's like a whole rainbow of nerd science. It's pretty cool. Over the first century of the tunnel's use, the trains passing through here would use a variety of engines to power the locomotives. Early on, trains would be steam powered. Later on, they went to even wood burning trains coming through here, which I didn't know was a thing. That means the tunnel would need to have ventilation shafts, and these shafts were so important that in 1863, when Brockville City Hall was being built directly over the shafts, the tunnel's ventilation shafts were actually incorporated into the building's design. If you look at Brockville City Hall, which was first named Victoria Hall, you can see two stone chimneys coming out of the roof of the building. Those stone chimneys go all the way down into the tunnel hundreds of feet below. And those diesel trains would continue to pass through until the 1970s, almost 120 years after the tunnel's construction. If it isn't obvious by now, I absolutely love the tunnel. I thought it was really, really cool. I was not expecting it. It runs for about half a kilometer. 
All right, well, that was super cool. If you're ever passing through here, it's definitely worth checking out. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use the audio that I shot in there just because YouTube has rules about using music in your videos, but uh, they have a whole musical thing. I don't know if the lights are really timed to it, but I like it, it was cool. Um, I really enjoyed it. And it doesn't rain in there. Actually, you know what? It rains more in there <laughs> from the dripping from the walls than it does um, outside right now. So there you go. You know, I walked it a few times and I read all of the little signs on the wall. I learned a lot and seeing a little bit of, of history was pretty, pretty neat. But at this point, I really need to figure out, okay, what am I going to do with the rest of my day? Am I going to stay in Brockville or am I going to just gun it? So naturally, I went to my favorite place to think about the stuff, which is the Tim Hortons around the corner. I checked the weather, still calling for rain for the next several hours until it was going to clear up later in the evening. I said, you know what? Book myself a hotel room. I'm going to take a hot shower and a nice nap. Okay, so I got to my room. I've been here resting up, warming up, drying up. It's been great. Uh, it's the Super 8. It was like 100 bucks all in Canadian, so maybe like 70, 80 bucks American. You know what? It's, it's clean and it's dry, but it meant not having to ride to Montreal where I did have a place to stay for free, but I would have been riding through the rain, which is funny because watch this. Yeah, what a difference uh, eight hours makes. Mm-hmm. So right here, Canada, over there, America, and that means over there is Quebec. That's where we're headed. But for now, I just want to get on the bike without all the bags, without all the weight, without all the rain, make sure everything still feels good. I want to just, A, do a nice little ride through of Brockville, in the dry. One more quick Brockville story. Right around where you're about to see me, there was a guy who lived here who became super rich. Oh, Fulford Academy. I think this is actually it right here. Fulford Place Museum. Yeah, I think one of those two buildings we just zoomed by was, was the place where this guy lived. He became really rich because he bought the rights to produce a product called Dr. Williams Pink pills for pale people. I shit you not, that's the name. It was basically iron, magnesium, sugar, and a ton of questionable advertising. Great. They basically advertised it as this cure-all pill that could help you no matter what your ailment was. And they would take out a lot of advertisements both in the US and in Canada in newspapers. And in part of their big ads, they would have a little typed up section that would be like a little typed up testimonial from a customer, whether or not these customers were real, no one really knows, but they had the testimonials typed up in such a way that it looked like a little editorial piece was being done on this product. So it fooled a lot, a lot of people. The guy became super rich. And there was this, this kid apparently who couldn't, couldn't walk. I think within the first three months of taking this pill, he could walk again. And then within six months, he was running around recess with all the other kids in his school. <laughs> so from paralyzed to just running around all because these uh, pink pills for pale people. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Well, let me tell you, I was just here. I parked like right there about four hours ago and we were just getting drenched. Yeah, a lot of Indian restaurants here and I have not seen any Indian people. Very interesting. Uh, I went to this bar around the corner right there and I'm like, that looks like a pretty nice pub. So let me find some parking. I parked like literally a kilometer back behind us, walked in the pouring rain, got in there and I said, please miss, I would like a dish of your finest chicken wings. And she said, we are sold out. That was sad, but it was okay. Still got something to eat. I would go back again. I would just probably call first if I wanted chicken wings because apparently running out of chicken wings is something that can happen. <laughs> and it made my heart sink. Sheridan's tourist accommodation. It's very cute. Very cool. And in hindsight, I would I would totally come back and and spend a, a proper day here and just wander and and take a look at all the stuff and maybe do a little. Uh, there's lots of bars along this strip, so I'd probably do a little pub crawl. I like the mix of old Edwardian and. and uh, Victorian era buildings and even before that and it's funny because a lot of these houses do have more of um more of a US feel to them than a Canadian one 
be totally honest, that's that's not really our style. But I guess with the proximity to the states, just being on the other side of the river there, it kind of makes sense. So much easier getting on and off the bike when I don't have 87 bags on the back. Um, back to what I was saying about it being a really nice town. I knew it was some place where I was like, okay, this place is cool. When I was walking through the tunnels that I probably already showed you guys in this video. And this woman walking totally by herself just looked at me, smiled, and said hello. And I was like, oh, cool, hi. And, um, and it didn't happen just once either. And there was like another group of two women and they just said hello. And I was like, oh, this is just a place where people just say hi. Let me tell you, no woman in Toronto is just randomly saying hi to you in a dirty wet tunnel. <laughs> Tomorrow, rain or shine, I will be leaving Brockville. I will be riding 215 kilometers to Montreal. And from that point on, my trip is gonna be a little different. Not just because everything's gonna be in French, more on that in the next video, but uh, yeah, you'll see. So hit subscribe if you wanna see that. If you like this video so far, please hit the like button and thank you guys for watching till this point. Well, that's it and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. As always, ride safe, but have fun. Peace.